Right, good afternoon, councillors. Um, this is my first meeting as chair of the Health and Wellbeing Scrutiny Committee, and I hope you will be gentle with me as I go through. Um, I have my doubts. Um, apologies. Apologies, I haven't received any apologies. Is anyone aware of any? Right, there being no apologies, can I just remind everyone that this meeting is being recorded and will be available to view on YouTube, which I'm sure you're all looking forward to. First item on the agenda is the appointment of a vice chair. Um, can I ask the committee for any nominations, please? Councillor Dean. Um, I'd like to nominate Daniel Maycock, please, as vice chair. Thank you. Are there any seconders for that? Councillor Cook. Are there any other nominations from the committee? In that case, can I have a show of hands, please, all those in favour? Thank you. Uh, congratulations, Councillor Maycock. The minutes of the previous meeting. There are minutes from the last two meetings uh, for approval, 28th of March and the 19th of April. I'll take them one at a time. Can I request a mover and a seconder for the minutes of the 28th of March? Happy to move, Chair. Thank you. Seconder? Thank you, Councillor Claymore. Is there a mover for the minutes of the 18th of April? Councillor Maycock. And seconded there. Thank you very much. Sorry, sorry Mr Can Chairman. Points of order. There has to be a confirmatory vote. I was just about to do that. Can I take them both now by show of hands, please? Thank you very much. Declarations of interest. Um, please can I ask whether there are any interests to be declared at this meeting? Nope, none at all. Thank you. Update from the chair. Um, the only update from me is that I was not able to attend the scrutiny meeting in Stafford and Dan Maycock very kindly stood in for me at very short notice. Do you want to, uh, to do a quick report back on that, Councillor Maycock? Um, so on the agenda for that was uh, dentistry, primary care, uh, access to primary care, uh, which were the, t the two main issues. Um, the ICV, which is the previous CCG has uh, taken over dentistry care uh, and they've got a two year program of getting to grips with it. Um, on the next meeting that, that they'll be attending, they will be giving more data on what uh, dentists around the region are still accepting IHS patients. And I think that was the main concern from the floor um, that uh, dentists weren't taking on uh, any more patients. Uh, there seems to be a, a lot of improvement in the access to primary care, still a lot more to do. Um, the attendance for GPs has gone up 11% since March 2019, but they are seeing peaks, for example, this March in that month was 43% higher than the March in 2019. So they are seeing peaks and troughs, but over the whole um, timeline, it's it's only 11% since 2019. Uh, I was able to give a discussion on the developing healthier communities agenda item that we did uh, as a committee on the previous meeting, and the chairman of the county committee uh, commended us on our work with that, and also the officers and the way they're interacting with county. Cheers, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Maker. Um, on dentistry, did they break it down by area to say what the position of NHS dentistry in each area is? For example, what it's like in Tamworth? They didn't break it down to that granularity. That's what they're going to bring, bring back uh, next time. But what they're seeing is um, the difficulties around the previous contracts and them being carried over into this into the ICB and, and how they're going to manage them, uh, which they'll be able to give more update on at the next meeting. Any other questions for Councillor Tina? Yeah, I think um, the access for primary care is something that we need to be on the ball with here. 
um, because we've still got this first past the post at eight o'clock in the morning and trying to get through the receptionist. Um, I've actually been contact, contacted by a family today that unfortunately had their elderly mother was unable to get through this morning and is now in Burton A&E, seriously ill. Um, so there is still that issue with the access to the doctor's surgeries and the lack of GPs. And I think this committee is, is just something we need to keep our eye on here and also um, at county, um, plug in Tamworth constantly. And just to let you know that the county rep that will come here is Thomas J. Thank you for that. Did they did they talk about accessing uh, GPS? Yeah, they, they, they did speak about the the eight o'clock uh, rush, uh, and that, that's the area that they said to that, that they need to do a lot, a lot more work on. Um, I, th I think one good thing that they, that has been put in place is that you you, you won't get told to to phone back an, an, another day. Uh, you, you will be triaged on that first phone call. We, we, we do understand that there are still long waits. Um, and the uh, an, another uh, highlight point that there it's about two thirds face to face appointments to one third over the phone, so, so that they have been increasing that coming out of COVID, and it, it is getting getting to a more normal state. Um, but I, I think it's about we have to get out of this mindset about seeing a GP, and it's about seeing the right person for the for the for the the condition that that you're presenting with. Because not, not everybody needs to see a GP. For example, if you sprained your ankle, physio would probably be the best one to speak to, which is what came out of the committee. So agree entirely about people wanting to see GPs is traditional, but it's not absolutely necessary any longer because some of the other physicians' associates, for example, are extremely skilled. Councillor Cook. Thank you, Mr Chair. Uh, so, yeah, um, obviously, um, one of the historic problems Tamworth has faced with GPs was the age profile, where we've been aware in Tamworth for a while that actually, you know, the age profile of our GPs in Tamworth was in the 60s. And the danger was all of a sudden they were all going to retirement age at one particular point, and obviously finding replacements was proving difficult. I don't know if that's still on the agenda at the County Council, but it was a serious concern of Tamworth for a few years. I know Councillor Oates has been involved in that as well. Thank you. I wasn't going to comment on Councillor Cook's point. Um, I was speaking to uh, a pharmacist recently, uh, I say recently, within the last three months. Uh, they own a number of pharmacies in Tamworth, Coventry and I think it was Worcestershire. Uh, and the reason I'm raising this is in Worcestershire they have a huge demand for people seeing pharmacists and you can get a GP appointment any day of the week without any hassle. The demand is through the pharmacy. That, that's where the problem is, is the, the lack of pharmacists available. So um, if, if, uh, if I could, Chairman, I'll get those details off that person I was speaking to, because I think what, what they were highlighting there could actually be quite useful for that, for that point you raised as to do we need to see a GP or could a, could a different route. So uh, I'll get those details and forward them to you, Mr Chairman. That would be extremely helpful because the, the workforce challenges faced by health and social care across the system affects pharmacy as much as it affects other areas. Councillor Mayer. Um, Chair, Chair, uh, th th they did comment about, on about the, the ageing population, so, so it is de definitely uh, being looked at. Um, another thing that I've just remembered, uh, one of the other items was on estates, uh, the ICB estates. Um, there was a presentation given uh, that their new strategy coming forward about utilising spaces that, that aren't being utilised. For example, one that's hopefully about to open, uh, Cherry Orchard um, Midlands Partnership Foundation Trust, to bring that back into, into use. Um, but, but I sort of thought back a little bit on that because um, with developments going up, uh, highlighted one of 1,500 houses that, that, that we all know about and there needs to be a GP surgery there and there's no point utilising a space that's in the middle of town when all the people are in Hamilton uh, and they've asked me to take that up with them offline to, to get, get somebody down and have a look at it. Joe. Any other questions on this? Thank you, Councillor Maker. Uh, the one thing I did want to say... I 
I really like that ringtone, though, I have to say. Um, I did want to say from the chair is that one of the issues, and you and I have discussed it, is that I'll be picking up in the time to come is about nutrition and food security. And I think in terms of the impact on cost of living and well-being, it's clearly a fundamental issue. So it is one I'll be picking up. I understand some work's been done on it, so I'll need to be finding out what that is. OK. Um, responses to reports of the Health and Wellbeing Scrutiny Committee. Now, obviously, I wasn't involved in any of this. Um, is there anything that we need to be aware of, Councillor Maycock, as the previous chair? Um, there was one thing that I went to Cabinet for um, before the election, uh, that Cabinet were then going to report back to us on uh, evidence about public toilets. Um, but I think that is getting sorted out via the new portfolio holder, uh, so I don't think we're going to have to re-refer back to Cabinet. Right. I mean, it, sorry, yes, it may well be that we need to ask for a further report on that, because it's clearly a fundamental issue. Um, there was also something at, at a previous meeting about mental health support for councillors. Yeah, so uh, Cabinet are looking at that with officers. Right. That was from... from I think so it was 27, will, 27th of April. 27th of April, right. So I will contact the new Cabinet and ask for updates on both of those areas. Um, I think that would be helpful for all of us. Is, was there anything else? Uh, no, I think all the other reports that, that had gone to Cabinet had been actioned. OK, the next item, we're getting through this agenda, aren't we? It's really good. Um, consideration of matters referred to the Health and Wellbeing Scrutiny Committee from Cabinet or Council. I have here that there are no new items. Anybody aware of anything? No. Nope. Um, update on health-related matters considered by Staffordshire County Council. Uh, well, count, in the absence of Councillor Jay, I'm not sure we can do a huge amount with this today. It, it, it would have just been the, 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 the comments that I've just, just given, Chair. Right. Um, housing strategy quarterly update. Who's picking this up? It's you, is it? <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Um, the, by way of introduction to this overview for, for obviously for, for, for new for new councillors, um, I was asked um, originally, uh, I think about a year ago, to update on the um, housing strategy 2020-2025. Uh, um, that was a document produced. It's not a statutory document, but it just brings together all areas of the council in relation to housing. Um, and following that introduction, I was asked to bring quarterly updates around information that we have and hold and collect um, for um, things that actually impact the well-being um, within housing um, and, and what we can do um, as a council and what we are doing. So the report at the moment is in, in the same context and as, as the previous first quarterly report that was requested. Um, so I think I'll... I'll Obviously, the, the report is quite explanatory in there. Um, we have a little bit around the planning um, and actually the, the affordable housing and where, where members can find that information. Um, the meeting the best use of existing housing and related assets. Um, there is information there, the quarterly reports from Beat the Cold, who are commissioned as our heat, heat service, uh, Home Energy Advice Tamworth. Um, looking at various, you know, helping people to sort of make the most best use of their housing assets uh, and apply for grants for um, energy saving um, information. Uh, they also do support with water bills. Um, and from there, the, the Staffordshire Warm Homes Partnership um, will actually deliver um, energy saving to uh, eligible residents. The figures on there, there are, there are, therefore for, for councillors to see um, and also the cost element there there's, there's over £200,000 worth of funding gone into Tamworth to help people with their energy efficiency um, also we have the information there on our houses of multiple occupation um, and the licensing and the standards that are there for, for our HMOs 
and the Meet the Cold quarterly reports are attached um, for, for members, as well as the um, Tamworth Advice Centre figures. The Tamworth Advice Centre is commissioned by the Council, um, essentially around debt support, which obviously affects people's housing. Um, the Advice Centre is reporting increased calls uh, through the cost of living crises, um, and we are at the moment looking to see whether we can actually procure further help from the advice centre. There's four elements to it. The generalist advice is available to all residents of Tamworth. Um, the housing teams refer people in for rent and other support. The benefits team also refer people in. And, there's a, and there is now funded through the heart of Tamworth an outreach service um, through the homeless support teams uh, that actually delivers face to face actually at heart of Tamworth. So within the report is the quarterly reports of each of those services um, for members to see. There is quite a lot of information, and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm be quite happy to take any feedback back if you want further information, less information um, as how, you know, what we do within regards housing affects people's um, health and well-being. Um, there's some information there that we record for private sector housing, um, the inspections that we do for with private landlords. Um, through the teams and also now the requirement to um, record um, any damp and mould complaints. The request came last quarter for just a quick update on where we are with damp and mould concerns that come through our social housing, our actual uh, housing stock, which um, Paul Weston's teams kindly supplied for us there. Um, that, that last quarter there were 245 um, complaints concerning damp and mould that were dealt with by the refer, re, repair service. You will see that within the private sector the actual complaints are quite low. That's traditionally um, private tenants sometimes don't know where to go for um, information and don't know where to sort of get advice from if they are private tenants. Um, the team are working hard on that at the moment. Refer obviously to the advice that our social te house housing teams give around um, damp and mould especially. Um, but that will be an emerging sort of workload for the officers. We've also ad adopted as a council um, the Eco4 Flex um, statement. The Eco4 is an, an obligation placed on energy suppliers um, to try and actually assist people in low, you know, low energy efficient homes. Um, they've now actually um, quite a, a large um, criteria for those grants. The household income needs to be under thirty one thousand. Um, that does not have to be people on benefits, it's purely a household income and that can be referred in through HEAT, HEAT will refer those in to us and also there's various different eligible criteria. Doctors um, can actually refer straight in for funding um, where the health conditions reach the four um, cardiovascular, respiratory, immunosuppressed, limited mobility. Doctors can actually have a route in directly to refer people for housing uh, heating um, improvements and there's also other other areas there. We've also um, got the Tamworth advice on there as I've mentioned. Um, I've referred back to the information that members might be able to get from the ho house homeless as a rough sleeping strategy because obviously that comes through separately through the housing uh, committees. Um, and a little bit around background to disabled facilities grants, which came back in house um, 1st of April. Obviously, we've not got a quarter report at the moment for, for that service, but you know, if members wish, we can get an update from how that is going, how that's working in house. Um, and then, obviously, um, of note, we retain a dementia friendly community in Tamworth. Um, the Alzheimer's Society um, has announced that the D Dementia Friendly Communities Recognition Scheme is actually ceasing. Um, however, the Dementia Friendly Communities uh, Alliance in Tamworth will be continuing working uh, together to continue to make sure that we take part in Dementia Action Week um, and, and that will work through our offices in a normal way. So there is a large amount of information attached, and I think you know that was the first. This is the second quarter, so really the recommendation is you consider the update information and priority and actions. And obviously, if there's any feedback you you want me to take or you want further information, 
or more detailed or less detailed um, or a different, you know, another format, I'm happy to, to, to take that back. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Any questions? Thanks for that, Joe. I uh, couldn't have explained that any better myself. Um, so, yeah, just wanted to re-emphasise this is um, for new members, really. Um, this is a quarterly update. Um, that was uh, talked about at the uh, last Health and Wellbeing. Uh, it's a quarter, every quarter. Um, and this is based on the key areas of the uh, TBC housing strategy. Um, <clears throat> So just to go over it, provision of new homes, make use of existing homes, housing role in climate change, access to homes that promote well-being, and advice funding available to older people to find accommodation. Um, and there's a lot of um, there's a lot of data in the in the report. Of course, if there is any additional data, uh, any kind of KPIs that you think uh, would further advance this update. Um, please do let us know. Thank you. Any other questions? Councillor Daniels. Joe, thank you for this report. I found it really detailed but also clear and it's really pleasing as someone who's new to this particular group to learn about the things that have been going on. And one of the thresholds about the um, £31,000 kind of limit is when we think about what our mean and median wages are on average for the country, a high threshold which means lots of people will be getting support, so thank you. I was also reminded of our previous conversation where we discussed communication and health and that kind of triangulation where you mentioned that doctors can refer, you know, do people know where they can get that information to do so. So I come with two questions, please. My first is, you mentioned um, a project linked to Alzheimer's and how we're now continuing work to be dementia friendly, but that project was ceasing. Could you tell me more about why that has to cease? Thank you. Uh the, the dementia, I mean, I, I know that obviously Councillor Clements uh, is, is part of that, the Dementia Friendly Alliance. We, as a council, became a dementia-friendly community about five, six years ago, um, maybe more than that. Um, and Sorry? There you go, six, thank you, Councillor Cook. Um, and, um, you know, as a council, we've promoted and supported that um, through the, part the community partnerships manager. Uh, and as a result of that, the, the Dementia Friends, the, the, the promotion in the, Dem the Dementia Action Week that goes on. Uh, a lot of work goes, goes across doctor surgeries and through different organisations for Dementia Friends, um, and inc including a uh, memory cafe that... that that, that, that operates through Heart of Tamworth and links in through Community Together CIC for their singing uh, and, and those sort of activities um, that, that go on for the, for the vulnerable. Um, what the Alzheimer's um, Society have announced is that they will no longer promote or support dementia-friendly communities as a scheme, as a recognition scheme. Um, it doesn't attract funding, we don't pay into it, however I think you know, with the, the decision is that we continue to be a dementia friendly community with not necessarily having that badge. Um, so, and, and I'm, I'm sure, obviously, Councillor Clements, you know, you may want to. Yeah, just a quick, if I may, Chair, I think it was important for us as a, as a Tamworth community, the community benefits outweigh whatever the cost is. We've seen through the Memory Cafe the numbers increase to the degree that we had to set up another one in, in Elford. Um, and somebody else took that on who, he was a carer for his wife, his wife passed away, and he understood better than anyone that that care was still required, um, and the carers go to there. So it's split between two sites now. Um, as a dementia ambassador, I've for the last six years I've been doing so much work, and when you see what actually goes on behind the scenes and, and the value that it gives to the people that need it the most, I think for us as a Tamworth community, it is just so worth carrying on with because it just outweighs any cost value to it. Yeah, and I think that's, you know, the data shows from the reports that dementia is a growing, uh, you, you know, concern for, 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 for an ageing population. Uh, and I think yeah, with the, with the um, carers, um, dementia carer in, in, in Elford that is setting up for Tamworth people, I think from memory there is a grant that's, that's been approved 
for them um, to, to, to start that up and, and, and hopefully that will continue. Thank you very much and thank you Councillor Clements also for that extra information, it's appreciated. Joe, you've mentioned some work you are just beginning looking at communication um, with private tenants to support them. Could you tell us a little bit more about that and thank you for doing so because I know it is beyond the social housing remit. Yeah, the, I mean, we have an obligation as a council, it is a statutory obligation to support and actually um, enforce uh, for private tenants um, if there are landlords that are not, you know, fulfilling their duty around housing standards. Yeah, we are, it's a very small team and um, there is a move, we are moving to ensure that landlords and tenants are pointed in the direction of some of the information that we offer as social housing because obviously you know damp mould complaints um, making sure you maintain your property they can all be referred through in the same way so that that becomes a project through our website and our information um, we are looking to re restart if that's the word um, following Covid a landlord alliance a landlord forum to invite private landlords to discuss and, 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 and understand stand that's in the early stages i've just got uh, two new members of staff effectively that are actually looking at that uh, and hopefully that will drive information through to them uh, that becomes part of the tenant reform bill i think that's the name of it i'm sorry it's just gone out of my head um which is the evictions uh, you know the, the sort of section 21 evictions how people can evict or whether they can't what advice we can give them so we are looking at the the, the government's asb um, um for um, information that's come out um, because that does specifically mention um, you know privates, private tenants and it's likely in the future there's going to be a um, decent home standard for the private sector so that may well have an impact on us moving forward um, just to make sure that we can get that communication rolled out so it's, it's very early on and it's, it's, it's a growing thing with the, with the team I've got at the moment. Thanks for that. Councillor Dean. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to go back to the Eco4 um, part that you did, where this amount of 31,000, is that a blunt thing? Is that something that we've, an amount that we've put forward? Is that a government thing? Because 31,000, if it's a family of two, is very different to <clears throat> 31,000 and over if you've got four children. You know, and Actually, these days, 31,000 is not a lot at all if you're trying to bring up a large family. So how do we catch people who fall foul of that? I mean, that, that's exactly why we have the, the heat advisory service, because in general, people will go through that to, 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 to look at what happens is, yes, it's 31,000 and yes, it's the government. Um, um, amount um, for a household there are other through the route there are other proxies that people can apply um, but they generally through the heat service they will advise what happens is the heat service then take the information and they pass it through to the officers of the council that that, that that check is then verified on what the information is provided for their household income so it is a household it's not you know not one person um, and, and, and it then goes back and then goes through to the um, Ofcom to actually start the process of energy efficiency. So, yeah, there are there are checks that we do and, and we, we, we actually sign that off. Councillor Cook. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, obviously, um, an item that I think both me and you got quite passionate about last night, Mr Chairman, that uh, corporate scrutiny was obviously damp and mould. Um, actually... It's interesting to read the figures here on page 26, if I'm reading that correctly. Uh, Tamworth Borough Council Housing Repairs Services reports the following damp and mould requests in January 2023 to March 2023. So just that two to three month period, 246 requests. Now we've currently got around 4,100 council houses, last figure I roughly remember. That looks like 6% of our council properties have damp in just that per period. That's actually quite a damning figure in my opinion. And I think, you know, as we said at corporate screening last night, it's why this desperately needs looking into. It's interesting reading that figure all of a sudden. And I just thought I'd highlight that, not so much for this committee, but I certainly, as we were saying on corporate screening last night, it needs looking into. And I just found that information interesting. 
Yeah, I agree. It's 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 something that impacts on the quality of life of people in a very significant way and their well-being indeed. Indeed. Are there any other questions on this? Councillor Maycock. Chair, Chair. I just wanted to come back onto the the hug because that's a, a, a hug because uh, I brought that up last time because we, we basically hadn't had any input into it. Um, so a couple of months down the line, we've got one application from zero. Now, I was thinking out of the box on this because fuel, it's off the, off the gas grid, but that doesn't have to mean oil. And there are quite a few number of properties in the borough that are electric properties, so they'd be eligible for it. I was just wondering what else you're doing to go out to try and get these applications bidded for. I mean, yeah, the, the home the home upgrade um, grants just come through the Staffordshire Warm Homes Partnership. So again, that is the uh, the work that the Heat Energy Advice Service are trying to update. We are um, they've just um, actually had some new staff to actually work look look at what we can provide for more communications. Um, so that is a, a separate one. Um, what I will say is similar to Tamworth Advice Centre, and you'll see from the, the, the quarterly reports, the calls to the heat service have gone up. Um, so we are looking to see if there's any other way that we can actually assist in that while, by either procurement of additional staff um, or ways of communication. Um, so it, it is promoted but that is a more of a, quite a, a specific grant that's come through the Warm Home Partnership. So we will steer people there, and so so does the Heat Service. So we will try, you know, where we can promote promote these grants. I'm just wondering why it's uh, was so different from comparable of uh, local authorities. It's the, the I don't know why it, it is. Mm. I mean, that may be who, that, whoever's mm -hmm. come through the the heat or beat the cold. They may have been pushed down other routes for assistance. So I, I can certainly go back to the Warm Home Partnerships and the contractor that administers those grants and just ask what the promotion is around Tamworth uh, and to see if they can get any further information out. Surely that the, the that that route should be the same across the county, shouldn't it? Mm. Yeah, I can take that back. Any other questions? Councillor Dean. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'd just like to go back to the damp and mould report because something that came to me while Councillor Cook was talking, I know we spoke about this at corporate, but um, there is a big issue here for health. And I'm just wondering if we have any data on um, childhood breathing problems or even adult breathing problems. Do we hold that kind of data because this is something that's coming forward nationally that there is a correlation between the state of people's houses and not just their well-being but their actual health so is that something that we can find out what what i will say is part of I and mean, obviously we don't hold that data we, we don't hold medical data on 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 you know, people's medical conditions unless there is a referral through for other issues um, what I will say is that's part of the health inequalities and the uh, what the councillor Maycock referred to and was discussed widely at last committee um, it's likely that it's that what's going to happen with the health in all policies and inequalities is that across the across the, the county each uh, district and borough will have two identified wards where a, a more detailed joint strategic needs assessment will be actually undertaken as part of a, that, that process to understand health inequalities. Um, now, that again, as per last meeting, that's just started to sort of roll out um, through the health inequalities board that I'm now attending. So that is likely to get to give us more data um, on those kind of health, childhood um, well-being sort of indicators. But as a as a council, we wouldn't hold that data. Thank you, Chair. Um, 
have we picked the wards yet? Because I'm conscious that it should be in the places where we're going to see the most um, good information from. Yeah, I haven't. We haven't actually got that far, but obviously it will be on on indices of deprivation. So that that's what that will be. Yeah. Councillor Rhodes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, picking up the point that's been made. Uh, yes, that piece of information is important, and we need to to get a grip of that. Uh, following on from Councillor Cook's point about our own housing stock and the percentage of, we have stock condition surveys on a regular basis. Do we specifically look at the type of builds we've got and the risk of those builds against damp and mould? Because we know we've got a variety of stock of a variety of ages. We know we've got Glasgow, Belgrave that spring to mind who were nice fantastic council houses with warm air heating when they were first installed uh, and if you're lucky you had a warm breeze on your back as you got in the bathroom uh, that's been ripped out we've now got wet heating systems what's happened to the ventilation what's happened to the modifications along the way and that information we should be able to just draw down because that it's our stock we know what modifications we've done we know what the uh, the type of build is so therefore surely we can identify those properties that are at most risk of, of, of having damp and mould. Uh, it, it's not going to give us all the answers, but combined with the information that uh, Councillor Dean has asked for, that, that could give us a very quick, easy starter for 10. I mean, obviously, that I don't, I don't have that information. Um, that would need to be referred back to to probably the assistant director neighbourhoods and and, and and the assistant director assets as to what they hold from the stock condition for our housing stock. But certainly, you know, if that that could be something that, as a committee, that might be something that could be directed to to, to them to find out. Councillor Cook. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, just. Um, Thinking out loud, um, actually, the tragedy here truly is that actually Tamworth Borough Council's housing stock is considered one of the better ones in the country as a council housing stock. You think about the ones in Birmingham, in Leicester, in Liverpool, and the state they're in. Think of the problems they must have with damp and mould. It's a terrifying thought when you think of that. Actually, we're saying this is a major problem, and we're considered to have a good stock. It's a really terrifying thought. And it has long term implications to the well being of the people who live in those houses and particularly younger people, but also there's an impact on older people and their quality of life as well. So we can't ignore this. Are there any other, any other questions? And I have more of a comment about, sorry, Councillor Maycock. I just wanted to comment on the, the, the inspection rates that they were doing really well up till May. Uh, I can understand May, probably because of the uh, elections. Um, but since then, uh, that's May 2022, sorry, uh, there's been, been hardly any, inspe any inspections uh, and that is on page 27. I think, are you, are you talking about the HMO inspections? Sorry, I've got my pages mixed up a little bit here now. <laughs> Or the proactive no, that's ones. Private sector. Private sector housing. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. We. we I, I, as I mentioned, the team is small. We had a. We had a bit of a hiatus of, of, of having no teams actually, or very very small staff. And we've also improved the reporting mechanisms. So some of the figures may be slightly skewed. So I've asked the staff to make sure that they now start recording it in a, in a way that's most you know more. Um, meaningful. Um, obviously there was a backlog for some inspections post-Covid as well and I think they spent a lot of time trying to catch up, uh, inspect HMOs and, and take reports uh, but largely as well um, we've, we've, we've now tried to identify the private landlords um, so we're trying to get a more cohesive programme of inspections um, rather than taking complaints and being a bit reactive, uh, we want to try and make sure that we, 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 we actually record the HMOs and actually start doing more proactive. So I, I think what I want to do, I want to look at the trend moving forward, which is why I've kind of put it all in there, um, but there are explanations as to why it looks like it's gone down. Yeah. Um, another one on the, the HMO front. Are we getting any reports of HMOs without licences? Uh, HMOs without licences because obviously they have to be licensed to 
Yeah, we've actually managed to identify, because the team have been a little bit more proactive now, now that we've got the team established, um, we've actually identified three or four more HMOs um, that have actually ha come, to ha come to highlight through either inspections um, from other HMOs, and they've gone and said, oh, there's a HMO, or they've actually come in through the planning route, um, or we've actually had some tenants complain and we've actually gone down. And actually, although a HMO doesn't need a licence, um, under f under five room five bedrooms, but they sh they should should comply with the management regulations, and that's what some landlords don't understand. So if you've got three rooms that you rent out, you still have to comply with the the license conditions or the the, the management regulations without needing a license. So that's something that with the, the team are now starting to look at to understand and, and identify those. Uh, uh, I think what was the more trying to get at is have we had any incidents where there's a two-bed house that's got 15 people in not that not that i'm aware that's been reported to us right any other questions on this item uh, there is a recommendation in front of us um, that the committee consider the updates and information provided against east each housing strategy, priority, and actions. I need a mover for that as a recommendation. Yeah, I'll, I'll move it, Chair. Uh, just to comment, uh, just before I move it, I, I think, it, like I mentioned last time, I think it's good that a strategy brings all them policies together, that, that, that we, we can see it. So, so them policies are probably spread, spread across a couple of different departments, but it, it's really good to see them all, all there. So uh, happy to move, Chair. Councillor Oates. Mr Chairman, in light of the conversation we've had around damp and mould, would it be appropriate at this point to request a further report with the answers to the questions I've asked and Councillor Dean has asked, or would you like to consider it as a work item later on in the agenda? I think a more detailed report after some research has been done, because I also have concerns about um, dementia. Um, which projections indicate will be the leading cause of death within 15 to 20 years. And the fact that we don't have a comprehensive strategy appears to me to be remiss, and we should be dealing with that. So a further report, are people content with that? Um, because what we've got here is we're just being asked to consider the update and information provided. I, th I think maybe that the, the scrutiny chairs might want to speak about that because if the if the, yeah. the, the information is going to be double balled onto the corporate scrutiny, I think I think it'd be better just to get get it coming to to one or the other. I, I, I see how it overlaps uh, definitely because of it being health and well-being, but but I mean if the information is going to be the same and there's a few members that, that are on both committees, uh, that I think the information is going to be and the, it's going to be the same questions given. Yes, Cook. Yeah, Councillor Maycock's absolutely correct, and uh, the three of us, the three screen chairmen, did say after last night's corporate that we are going to stay in very close contact. Crossover is inevitable occasionally, where certainly with serious issues. So I think you know making the officers do the work twice would be a nonsense. So we've already said between the three of us, we're going to have regular meetings and make sure where there is crossover, the committees are talking and make sure we're not doubling up officers' workloads. So it's an absolutely fair point. Can I just just add? That? Thank you for that, because I mean, you know, the, the report does say to consider, you know, when we started to look at this last year and, the, you know, you, the, the remit was given to me to try and identify what information we held and what, what could be presented to you that, that cover that housing strategy. So, yeah, I would fully support trying to, I think that's the conversation that Councillor Smith and I've just had earlier, where we can pull it together rather than myself trying to present everything to health and well-being that then comes across corporate scrutiny with a little bit of um, direct direction from that to actually what we are looking at and how we are scrutinizing it and how you are scrutinizing it what data you require we'll gladly go away and find but yeah it would you it would be very useful for myself to understand what is to be scrutinised and what information we want, how we do it and what kind of action plans that come out of. So I, from an officer point of view, if I may, I would, I would support that. 
So is the recommendation then that we go and, as three scrutiny chairs, we coordinate our, our efforts on this? Councillor Dean. Um, I support the fact that we need to be working together as three scrutiny chairs, and I don't want to give work to the officers, but the kind of report on housing that would go to corporate is different to the information that we would want about what the health what the implications of that does to people's health. So I think that there is a case that some stuff needs to be here and we need to be looking at it in a different way. Councillor Oates. Oh, and Councillor, yeah, I'll come to you, Tina, in a minute. Uh, could I make a suggestion in light of the conversation that's taken place that we, that we don't demand a report at this point, but we include that item as part of our work plan and that allows time for a bit of scoping and a conversation with the chairman, but it still keeps it on our on our radar. Councillor Mine. Clements. <laughs> I was just going to say that a dementia friend strategy, a dementia action strategy, is a piece of work in itself. Um, you, that can't be rammed into something else. So I was just going to that's got to be that's got to be kept completely separate because it's massive. I'd agree with that entirely. It's far too important. So where have we got to then? Clearly we can't pass this recommendation. I actually have a problem with the wording of the recommendation as well. But uh... Councillor... Yep. Indeed, Chair, obviously I was gonna, just going to... So to move the recommendation, but to also move the which I think what Councillor Oates is doing to, to move to form a working group. Also, um, uh, so it's, it's two, two points. I mean, my problem with the wording of this recommendation is that it doesn't ask us to do anything. And um, I really feel the scrutiny committee should be asked to approve a direction of travel and not just consider it. Councillor Cook. Yeah, uh, absolutely, Mr Chairman, uh, share your concern. Uh, the committee is uh, recommended to consider the information provided. And don't need to recommend it, we've just done it. <laughs> it. It is, not to call it a nonsense of a recommendation, I get what you're trying to say, but it's worth remembering from a point of governance, recommendations do not exist until somebody moves and seconds it. So what this committee chooses to move and second is up to us. So, yeah, the officers, as are suggesting within the report, as a suggested recommendation, we don't have to take it. That recommendation only exists when there's a mover and a seconder. So if, if, we, if you feel there's something better we can move, I'm happy to go with you. It's a difficult one, isn't it? We'd, I mean, my view is that we simply need to set the recommendation aside because I don't think it actually means anything. Just not move it. Are people content with that? I think Joe's got the gist of where we want to be with it, and Joe's going to go away and and take that on board. So I think Danny's right. We don't have to move that at all. Joe's aware of what we need to do. It's in the minutes, and I think we can we can we can work with that. Councillor yes, Daniels. And I was going to add in: Would we want it? underneath that there's going to be those two projects or should we do what's just been suggested here and then we know going forward we've got the corporate scrutiny team looking at the other issues. Uh, thank you. Uh, I, I think from the, the, the last uh, committee meeting that this, this came to that there wasn't necessarily specific recommendations that were given but, but as has been d discussed and uh, Council Clements has said that, that, uh, that the officers took on board from our last comments and, and that report is a, a lot more informative th than the previous one from the comments that were given. So, so even without formalising the recommendations, uh, the, the officer was able to go away and uh, take on board the committee's response. Okay, can I? Can I just, just, I just, I mean, from from a point of view, I think this is one of the reasons. This is, you know, this is the second time uh, we've done this. Uh, obviously, uh, new members. Um, I'm, I'm happy. You know, we. I just need to be clear. Do you still wish to have that quarterly, quarterly update 
on these performance indicators is that you know is that information enough that you still want to have from the housing strategy um so i think yeah i, I take on board what you're saying about that recommendation um i'm quite happy to 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 have another you know another direction of travel that you wish from the housing strategy or are you looking now to, in, to just actually take out that word housing strategy and, and take it more from a wealth health and well-being perspective yes i have that problem um yeah what with the suggestions been made that we put this into the work plan for a more detailed consideration at a future meeting so that we can be clear what it is we want from a housing strategy when it comes here. Because at this point, I don't think we're clear. Mr Chairman, it's been a while since I've been on Scrutineer District. Uh, I've always been of the feeling that quarterly updates are merely for information, and we use those to pick particular items we want to then dig deeper on. Uh, so in terms of tonight's report, We've had a discussion about cold and uh, damp and mould, so we'll consider that as a work item on the, uh, on the work programme. And then at the next quarter, we can see the whole update again and then pick whether we want to dig deeper into anything or, or not. So, so I think in terms of a, an agenda item, I think we need a, a quarterly update and use that as a way of picking out and going, that's working really well, what's, how are we achieving that? Or that's not working well or we've got questions and, and we do a, a, a deeper dig. Uh, so for me, I think a course update would be useful for continuing to build that work program as we go through the year. That's helpful. Thank you. Councillor Michael. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'd echo that, Chair. I mean, like, Eco4 has only just, just come... It, it was in the report last time, but the Cabinet hadn't signed it off. It's now just come into force. So, so hopefully it's going to go well, but we need to see that at the next quarter, just as hug as has had some improvement, but I don't feel enough. Okay. Anything else on this item? Are we content to move on? I don't think we can sign off the recommendation. Everybody content to move on? Thank you. Can I thank you, Joe, for bringing that uh, to our attention and for the report. Thank you. No, can I join? No, it's fine. <laughs> right, um, forward plan. Um, this item is to consider whether there are any further items on the forward plan which the committee would like to consider. Uh, thanks, Chair. Um, just come on the forward plan the other day after our uh, conversation, but I'd like to see the Anchor Valley Sports and Community Complex 3G on there. And I know. There's a little bit of lap over there with uh, infrastructure, but it's a sports complex, and I, th I think uh, it, it definitely falls under our remit. Yep, sounds like a good idea to me. Any any other items that we want to consider in the forward plan? Uh, j just one chair that um, that's a due date of the 18th of July on the full council. I don't know. Where, have we got a meeting before the 18th of July? Apparently not. No, cancelled. Ah. Are there any other items? Councillor Oates. The the report's going to full council. I'm I'm trying to think now, I'm a feet. Uh, I don't know if Councillor Cook will help me out. I'm assuming that's that we've received government funding and therefore it needs to get to full council to be included into the MTFS because it's not our money therefore it wasn't included in the original MTFS for the year rather than the release of the project and the detail so it may well be that it follows and comes to scrutiny I'm just trying to understand the timeline because normally if we get a government grant for match funding we don't include it in the MTFS because we haven't got it when we get it because it's not in the MTFS, only full council can include it. So I wonder if it's the funding part rather than the final decision. Councillor Cook. 
Yeah, uh, council house is uh, absolutely correct, but it, obviously, as council house know, depending on the amount of money, if, if it was four thousand pound, cabinet could quickly do it. But yeah, when the council sets its budget in February for the following year, any monies received that were not budgeted for need full council approval to put it into the spend because it's not uh, cabinet is authorised to spend money by the budget process at full council. If they receive monies that haven't been budgeted, cabinet has not been authorised to spend to full council. But I think it, there is an amount. Is it ten thousand or something? So it, it could be that, yes. But I, I don't know. I'm like councillor. I'm thinking on my feet at the minute. Well, apparently we have a full council meeting on the eleventh of July. Is it eighteenth of July? There's a health and wellbeing committee on the eleventh. How does that fit with the timetable? I think put it on, say yes for now, and then we can go away and speak to Cabinet. Mr Chairman, I've, uh, through the wonders of modern technology, <laughs> uh, I've found it on the forward plan. It is to seek Council approval for the design, manufacture and installation, so it is the final decision uh, that's going through full Council on the 18th of July. So I, th I, th I think yeah, it should, should definitely come before ourselves on the 11th. Did you say the 11th of July, Chair? Yeah. Anything else? Councillor Claymore. Yeah, just to say that I agree with that. I uh, noticed that um, the consultees are Anton Ward councillors and I haven't received anything yet, so I'm looking to receive something at some point. So you've not been consulted on this at all so far? Well, that's something we need to look at, isn't it? Okay, thank you for that. We've noted. Anything else for inclusion in the forward plan? Uh, Chair. Yeah. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, it, there was a working group last year uh, about the Armed Forces Covenant. We've got uh, uh, Councillor Clements here, who, who was uh, instrumental in, in getting the, the signature again, and uh, Councillor Oates. Uh, but it's going before cabinet on the 20th of July, so I, th I think just to just to have the overview of that report before it gets there. So again, that'll probably be the 11th of July meeting. That was the Armed Forces Covenant, was it? Right. Thank you. Anything else? In that case, moving on, it's got working group updates. Uh, so there was a couple on, on the, the agenda last year, uh, Armed Forces Covenants was one that, that came off, there was public toilets which came off, uh, I think the only outstanding one that was on there was uh, C uh, CPR. CPR? Yeah, it was me and uh, Councillor Kingston um, and we, we was going to get... Um, Heart. Who is it? Who is it? Sorry, Tina. I have a heart uh, to, to come and give us a talk on how the the defib machines uh, being rolled out and and also what because it became a um, a requirement for schools to teach uh, CPR uh, and we just wanted to see how that was going and and, and has there been any effect out on the out on the, out on the street. Yeah. That to carry on going, I'd be happy to. Lay that up. It would be useful. It would. Okay, the next item is the Health and Wellbeing Scrutiny Work Plan. And it says here review the items on the work plan. Are they still relevant? Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, obviously, you've got your statutory ones that, that need to be coming in, you've got your quarterlies. Um, I did push back the homelessness winter prevention from March to, it was meant to be this, this, this meeting actually, but uh, to, possibly to the next one, only because in March we were still having cold snaps and I didn't think it'd be appropriate that that review came to the committee when, when things were still still in process.
Are there any items that the committee would wish to add to this committee's work plan? Are we not adding the damp and mould? I think we are, yes. Councillor Cook. Uh, yeah, thank you, uh, Mr Chairman. Uh, I know uh, this committee has looked into it historically, and I know Councillor Oates certainly would have been involved uh, last year, but obviously with the George Bryant Centre cl closing, obviously with people now into, into 10 Stafford and obviously within the community services, obviously some time has now passed, so there'll be now data on how is that affecting people's wellbeing, how is it affecting families that have to visit loved ones in Stafford rather than just on the border of town. I wonder if it's time, it's maybe not now, maybe not the next meeting, let a little bit of time elapse maybe and see what the effect has been on the residents of Tamworth with mental health needs with the loss of the George Bryant Centre. I'd just be curious to see how that's, what effects it's had. So you're looking at impact on residents is what we're looking at. Do we know what the future of the George Bryan Centre is yet? Councillor Maycock. Uh, th this is something that I brought up at the, 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 the county meeting. Uh, the meeting before that, uh, some time in the last council year, um, Midlands Partnership Foundation and Trust and the ICB uh, both sent a report to county and uh, it was going to affect five residents a month because majoritively the, the, the people who were needing inpatient care were already going to Stafford. So the, I, th I think that the, the, the issue is about carers and family getting to to and from uh, Stafford because w when somebody's in an inpatient um, facility they're, they're, they're generally in there unless it's coming up to the time that, 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 that they're going to be able to come out um, but all through that period of, of the stay it's going to be the carer or the parent or the family that's going to be going to and from Stafford um, so I, th I think from my point of view it's making sure that that the ICB are doing what they said they were going to do, which was put a um, not not policy uh, statement. I can't remember the word, but basically that they're, they're going to um, pay for for the travel up up to a point. Um, well. That's going through, and they did say they wanted it for a 12-month period as a as a move on. Um, but I did state that it should be really looking at a three-year to 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 understand uh, what what the, the price impact for families, especially in this bit of economic crisis that that we're going through at the minute. Yeah, I mean, a, a short-term fix in terms of travel costs where people have a permanent condition is not particularly helpful, and it needs a much longer-term strategy than that. Councillor Oates. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Uh, as I said earlier, I've not been on health scrutiny uh, at the district for a long time, uh, and I'm not on health scrutiny at the county. Uh, but I have noticed that the ICB operating plan of first quarter performance and KPIs are being reported to the county scrutiny on the 24th of July, so I'd expect to see some figures in there around that. Uh, but also scheduled for the 18th of September is a mental health update going to county scrutiny. So in light of Councillor Cook's comments that we need an update at some point, probably not now, I do wonder if our meeting following the 18th of September, we have a, a more Tamworth specific update and use the, the county one as, as context, so I'd say late late or some sort of time would be ideal for that. Yep, I think that's sensible. Councillor Maycock, did you? Um, it, I, I just, I'm sorry, I, I just don't think there's going to be any data around the George Bryant Centre in there, uh, and now that's gone, uh, unless we can speak to uh, the Chair of the County Committee and, and get, get, get a message put across to the ICB on, on how that's, that's going, uh, but, but because it was made clear that the... the um, George Bryan Centre wouldn't be looked at again as a, as a inpatient mental health facility. Maybe something else, hopefully, in the future. Well, I think I will talk to the Chair of the Scrutiny Committee at County, because I don't think that's acceptable. Councillor Dean. 
I'm quite shocked that anyone would think just giving people some travel money is a solution. It, yes, there, there was a big issue for people who've got to go and visit, but there was also the, the issue for the people who've got to stay that far away, what it's doing to them. Tamworth is huge. We need more than five beds, I'm sure, and we need our own facility, and that's what we should be pushing for. Sorry, Chair, there might have been a little bit of a misunderstanding there. It's not just, just five beds. It was... I can't remember the exact figures, but say out of 20 people that, that need an inpatient mental health facility from Tamworth, 15 of them were already going to Stafford, and five of them were staying at a, at a, at a less... I, I've, I've been to all the meetings, and I feel, I feel it, I feel it, and I've really pushed for it. Um, yeah. Sorry, if I could just come back. They just shouldn't be going to Stafford. There should be something local, definitely. I would agree with you, and I share your sense of surprise that there's, considering this to be any sort of solution, it, it, it isn't right. Well, we'll push together on this. Uh, Councillor Claymore. Yes, thank you, Chair. <coughs> yeah, and I totally agree with Councillor Dean. Um, this is something that myself and Councillor Maycock have been pushing for a long time now. Um, and it isn't just monetary. It's time. People need time. If you... If you start, if you finish work at five o'clock and you want to go and visit somebody in Stafford and maybe have to get two buses, by the time you get there, it's time to come back again. Um, so it isn't just about money. It, you know, you may have small children that you've got to find somebody to look after. So, no, I totally agree. We shouldn't be going to Stafford. Um, and we have made this very clear and shouted very loud about it. Um, but... If you can talk to um, the Chair of Scrutiny at Stafford, I think that would be most useful. I'll also get a meeting with the Chief Executive of the Partnership Trust, because I don't think we should just sit and take this, to be honest. Is there anything else? Uh, uh, I know that uh, Litchfield did have a... Uh item and, and the chair did go to the to their meeting so so I'm sure that it could uh, offer us the same. Okay. Great, thank you. Anything else? Okay, if there are no further comments, that is the last item on the agenda. And I think no no good looking at that. The battery doesn't work, does it? <laughs> <laughs> so at um, gosh look at that. We're finishing early. Can I thank you all for your attendance and your contributions? If you have any thoughts about what we could do um, between meetings, please get in touch and we'll see what we can do together. Thank you for coming.